Hello, everyone. I'm Professor Aufwart from the Heidelberg University Eye Clinic, and I'm going to talk about the combination of the small aperture IOL technology, the ICA for macular focus, with the multifocal IOL technology. Uh, and I will tell you that this is a very good or perfect match. When we look at the uh, biggest market actually we have in refractive surgery, it's the presbyopia market. And there's a lot of unmet needs in different regions. Some are very far developed, some are very underdeveloped, uh, and not all technology is available there. So globally seen, there's a lot of unmet needs in presbyopia. What do we have? Well, uh, at the moment in most countries available or approved are trifocal technology. You see these lenses here, uh, but they are not everywhere approved, especially also the EDUF technology is not everywhere approved. Some of them are, some of them are not. And they all are based mostly on either refractive or diffractive technology, or they work with astericity and other optical features that you change on an intraocular lens. A very simple but very effective principle is a pinhole principle that everybody knows and everybody as an ophthalmologist has used in its daily practice, a small aperture technology, which is implemented in the IC8 IOL from AccuFocus. You see the model here, you see the optic design and its data, and you see uh, it's a little black mask or the little black uh, ring, uh, how it's made of and what it's made of. And everybody knows this uh, type of uh, implant already from refractive surgery in terms of the corneal implant, but here we have that inside the intraocular lens. And uh, I think everybody understands how this works just by looking at the principle. We evaluated that with an uh, optical bench, and we also have a special setup for optical pathway imaging in the David J. Apple laboratory, which I'm the director of and is settled here in Heidelberg. What we do is we look at a specific optic in the lab, putting it in an IOL holder, using a model cornea like in a normal human person. And then we use green laser light to visualize how the light goes through an intraocular lens. And we do a photographic uh, illustration of that. And I will show you how different lenses look like in a few seconds. We also looked at the optical performance in terms of optical quality. That's called the modulation transfer function or the straight ratio of an intraocular lens. For this, you need uh, professional equipment that like manufacturers of intraocular lenses uh, all have in their uh, factories, like the Optics Very Pro from Trioptics. So it's an optical bench that evaluates these lenses. What you look at is how good the measured optical performance goes against the uh, theoretical possible best optical performance, the so-called diffraction limit. And we can look at the numbers and we can look at the area under the curve, which is a little bit more represented in the so-called Strail ratio. And this is also compliant with uh, certain ISO standards. So let's look at some of the lenses and how the light goes, for example, through the diffractive lens, the symphony. You see on the right side the, uh, uh, the rings being uh, displayed. And you see here the uh, elongated range of uh, vision uh, here, which uh, are marked by two points, a near and far point. So minimal ready is not diffractive. You see complete different image here also on the, on the right screen. Uh, and it gives you also an enhanced depth of focus, which is based on uh, different uh, spherical aberration in the center of the IOL. The IC8 is pretty straight. There's one hole, everything goes through it. 100% of light goes there. And it's very much bundled and very much condensed, so to say in the middle and gives you a very clear, sharp image over a wide range uh, of focus. The comfort lens from Oculentis, I'm saying that here because it's uh, used widely in Europe and in Asia, is nothing else than a bifocal lens, which has a near and far focus. And the near focus is at 1.5 diopters, so around 70 centimeters. The interesting part is if you look on the optical bench at the numbers and the through focus curve, you see here, the uh, yellow dotted line, which is the AccuFocus line, you see this has the best and highest uh, MTF, and also the, the broadest, largest, uh, as you compare that with all the others available uh, EDOF IOLs on the market. Uh, it's, it's, it's much, much uh, wider. It gives you almost two and a half diopters of uh, depth of focus. If you look here, uh, you can see that it's one big uh, peak and not two peaks as the other EDOF lenses have. 
And as you see, it's a very high quality. Similar also, if you look at the numbers itself, the MTF numbers for uh, the 50 or 100 uh, LP per millimeter, which represent the uh, SNELM visual acuity of 2040 or 2020. Here for distance, uh, the arcifocus is the best. The straight ratio for near arcifocus is also best because this is a more or less a area under the curve. Uh, uh, and uh, for the normal near focus, the MTF, others are similar or a little bit better. But in general, the MTF and the strain ratio of the arcifocus lens is the best compared to all the others. And we can summarize that here in the conclusion slide. What do we see from clinical work? Uh, there was a, a big prospective comparative international European multicenter trial and, and case series. The uh, IC8 was put in the uh, near dominant eye and a monofocal IOL in the distant dominant eye. And by this combination, in this case, the IC8 was also targeted slightly myopic, minus 0.75 diopters in refraction. And with this combination, uh, they could achieve pretty good. Uh, Specular independence with pretty good uh, distance, intermediate, and near acuities, uh, with the distance and intermediate acuity being the best and the near acuity being uh, good, functional, sufficient for reading. But I thought we may be even able to push a little bit more because the problem is not the ICA, the problem is the partner lens, the monofocal lens, which only has a maximum uh, a good distance and a slight uh, intermediate acuity. So what we did was a kind of mix and match approach. We combined this with a uh, very forgiving uh, uh, multifocal lens, a bifocal lens, the Alentis uh, MF20, which is a bifocal refractive lens with a two diopter uh, uh, near addition. And the combination of this, we call this a mosaic study, as you can see here, monocular oculentis and small aperture, IC8 combination, was uh, put in 26 eyes and very, very intensively studied in terms of different things, not only functional vision, also uh, reading performance, photic phenomena, defocus curve, and so on. And this has been published just uh, end of last year in the Journal of Refractive Surgery, uh, and, and very detailed uh, the data are in there. If you look here at the table one and table two, you see the visual acuity before and after uh, surgery, preoperative and postoperative, uh, especially for the distance here. And you see that we get almost at 2020 with both lenses in, on average in all the patients. But interestingly, the uh, difference between target and achieved uh, refractive outcome was uh, very good foreseeable with the IC8. We targeted at minus 0.5 and we ended up uh, at that area exactly. Uh, and with the uh, MF20, target was a zero and it ended up slightly myopic here at minus 0.3. So we have a very good refractive and reliable refractive outcome here and, and good basic data for the distance. If we look at the uh, five months follow-up uh, uh, when everything has settled, we can see here from uncorrected distance up to uncorrected near visual acuity, we have pretty good results for uh, distance and intermediate 2020 uh, uh, by all the, in all the patients, binocular and monocular. And if you look at the uncorrected near visual acuity, we are around 2030 monocular, but almost uh, 2025 uh, binocular. So patient has uh, full vision in, in the whole range uh, of distances, which is what we want. And we can see that also here on the uh, defocus curve. And as I told you from the theoretical uh, or optical bench uh, evaluation, we see here easy uh, two and a half diopters uh, covered uh, binocularly. So this is uh, what we need for our patients to be spectacle independent. If we look at the uh, outcome uh, of the arcufocus alone and at the percentage, we can see that 100% of the patients monocularly reached 2030 or better, 62% 2025. So pretty good results, even if we just look at the uh, monocular outcome of the lens targeted at minus uh, 0.5. But which is more interesting for me is also the astigmatic tolerance. We looked here at several patients that had uh, astigmatic uh, uh, more than astigmatism uh, more than one diopter, on average 1.48, so 1.5 diopter, and they all had an uncorrected distance acuity of zero logma 2020, which shows you that it completely compensates for this astigmatic uh, value, which is uh, very interesting. 
So let's look at the reading performance in more detail. The so-called Salzburg reading desk is nothing you would buy in your private practice, but at the university set up an academic clinic, we uh, have a lot of use for this if you evaluate presbyopic lenses. And you can do all kinds of uh, evaluation reading, speed, uh, fall size, time, uh, distance of the patients, surround illumination, all kinds of stuff can be looked at with the Salzburg reading desk. I just want to show you one slide uh, where we see the reading performance. And uh, while we have for intermediate and for uh, uh, near QRT, uh, LOGMA values of 0.2 to 0.1, so 2030 up to 20, uh, 25. The interesting part is the words per minute, so the reading speed. It is generally said uh, excellent reading speed is like 80 words per minute which we know from all the multifocal intraocular lens and trifocal lens studies. And here we have a much faster reading speed of like 138 and 120 words per minute, which really gives you a very, very fluent reading with this combination. Let's go to the dysphotopsias. This is the biggest problem we have with trifocal technology or with all technologies that have these rings, these diffractive patterns on the IOLs. They have to have a glare and halo uh, that's inside, intrinsic in the optical principle. We have this uh, simulator. Patient looks on a computer screen. This night scene with headlights or backlights from the from the cars, and he can give us an indication on the screen how big the halos are, how intense they are, how big the glare is, how intense it is. And we get numbers, and with these numbers, we can do statistics, and we can do simulation and show what an average patient with a combination of an IC8 and a uh, uh, refractive lens uh, is looking at. So the num numbers you can see here for halo size and, gla and, and glare uh, for uh, size and intensity, and you see on a scale from zero to 100, we are around uh, 35 to 40 in terms of halo, and below 20 in glare size and slightly over 20 in clear intensity. So what does that mean? How does an average uh, patient with these numbers uh, can see this evening scene? Here it is. And you can see this is almost like a monofocal lens, just a slight halo, uh, almost uh, difficult to see. So it's a really uh, a relaxed situation. This patient has no problem at night when he's driving uh, with this kind of, of images. If we compare that, for example, with similar studies we did with Panoptics, Artelisa Tree with Symphony, you can see here much more halo glare or starburst. Uh, uh, in size, in intensity, compared to the combination IC8 and MF20. So we can really conclude here that this combination gives an extra icing on the cake, as we say. We get a little bit more near acuity and more stable near acuity out of this, but we don't have any expense in terms of side effects. Halo glare is almost like a monofocal lens. And so we think this is also a very good option for achieving specular independence. And it also tells us that the combination of the IC8 with whatever other optic, the MF20 is one example, but I'm pretty sure you can combine it easily with other EDF lenses, will also uh, enhance uh, the performance of the whole optical system. So I thank you very much for your attention.